Good evening, my friend. Welcome home. Welcome to the show. I am Lou Mangiello. It is Wednesday night, my favorite night of the week. Why? Because you're here and we get to spend and share it together. If you're watching live, thank you so much for being here. Do me a favor. Run, go grab yourself a snack, something to drink, kick off your shoes, sit back, relax. We're going to have some fun tonight. If you're watching on the replay, please don't forget to join us every Wednesday right here at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. By here, I don't always mean here. Uh, in fact, I had all intents and purposes tonight of not being live from the headquarters, which is the home studio, which is the fifth bedroom in my house. However, um, sometimes life has a way of being life. I intended, since we were going to talk about Disney's Hollywood Studios, I intended to be live from Disney's Hollywood Studios, and I was actually going to invite you, literally you, to come there, wander the parks with me, talk about, listen to the music, and maybe, just maybe, if the wind was just right, the stars aligned just perfectly, we would grab and share a snack together. That's okay. Uh, maybe next week. Maybe next week we will do it. Because uh, if you've listened to this week's show, you know that we only talked about part one of the music of Disney's Hollywood Studios. And if I find that I'm going to be able to be at live from Disney's Hollywood Studios next week, I will let you know in advance. And who knows, maybe we could meet up, walk around, take a ride, share a snack or two or three, um, and enjoy and talk about the second half of the music. But that's okay, because tonight I'm live from home. Um, hopefully that's where you are, although I did see some people in chat saying that they were live from... Somebody said they were live from... Wait a minute, I didn't... A resort somewhere on property. Um, Beth is watching from Brooklyn. Let me know where <clears throat> you are watching from, wherever it is that you call home. And before we get into... Uh, the discussion about the Hollywood Studios music, part un, which I'm assuming in some language means one, <laughs> um, and and a reveal, a reveal of something that has been on the whiteboard and the mental whiteboard for a long period of time. You're saying, Mangello, you're not going to do it because you're going to freak Becky out. I mean, I probably will anyway, but not necessarily because Becky is in on this one. And she knows about it, too. However, before we get started, I'm going to put my my serious face and my serious voice on for a second. I was talking about how we're watching from home, uh, broadcasting from home. And I want to take a second to, uh, un to talk about something about our home. And I mean our home collectively, because if you're watching on the WW Radio page or if you're watching on the clubhouse, it is the same video, but the clubhouse is our home. It is what I have always intended it to be from when it was a discussion forum back in 2000, January of 2004. And whether this is your first time here or you've been with us together since the very beginning, you know it's not about where the place is. It's not about the Facebook group. It's wherever it is that we gather together as more than just a community and more than a group of friends, because we are friends, whether we've made it or not, but really it's a family. And, you know, right now the clubhouse is sort of metaphorically our home. And in our home, just like in my home, we welcome people, any people, all people, no matter where you are from, who you are, what you do, what you believe, you are welcomed into my home and in our home with open arms. It is the way it always has been. It is the way it always will be. And one thing that I love, and I've always loved since the forums and, and even here in the Facebook group, and it's why I like the group so much better than the page, is that everyone... Every single person in this group is on equal footing. Anyone can start a conversation about anything and anyone can comment about anything to anyone. And I get it, right? We're all 
different people. We are all human beings. We all come from different backgrounds and walks of life. And if you want to disagree with one another, that's fine, right? It's conversation and sometimes, you know, I don't want to say conflict, but it's what makes the world go round, right? If you want to argue that the cozy cone is better than the shawarma, let's talk. Civilly. I mean, I agree with you, actually, that the cozy cone is probably, I don't know, maybe, it depends on the day of the week. But let's talk civilly and friendly. And I'm going to say this in the most, I want this to to come across in the strongest yet most G-rated terms I can possibly share. It's Blanken Disney. It's Disney. We talk about Disney in our group. That is sort of the thing that unites us and bonds us and brings us together. I will only say this and I will only say it this one and last time. I will not tolerate comments that are rude, disrespectful, insulting, argumentative, inflammatory, aggressive, judgmental, harmful, or obviously rising to the level of personal attacks on someone. I have never seen this before. There is no excuse for it now. It is not who we are. It is not what we do. And if I see it, it's over. And when I say it's over, I don't just mean that conversation is over. I have no compunction about, and I've never had to do this before, about removing someone from the group. I require... And I ask respectfully only one thing from you. And 99.999% of the people in this group know this already because it's who you are. I ask one thing, that you be courteous and civil and respectful and kind and compassionate and mindful and just and polite. You know, the things that we as humans should be doing every single day to every single person that we meet. And if that's not who you are, that's fine. But I think that there are other groups out there that may be a better fit for you and maybe what you are looking for. This is our home. Leave. Sorry. Leave the drama at the door, please. The real world is full of enough of it. This is a place of escapism. It is a place to gather with friends, to get away from all the nonsense and the anger and the nonsense and, and that's happening in the real world. Everyone is welcome here and should be made to feel that way always. I will leave you with something that my parents... Guys, you were right. <laughs> It took me 54 years to maybe admit to some things, but you were right. If you can't say something nice, don't say it. That's it. Um, I will leave it at that, and we will move on to the the reasons why we're here and the things that we want to talk about and the things from this week's show. Uh, Specifically, let's talk about um, I'm sorry. I needed to. I needed to. Yeah. Let's talk about the uh, the music of Disney's Hollywood Studios. Um, we we sort of virtually toured our way through the not even the first half, maybe like the first third of Disney's Hollywood Studios because we needed to talk about sort of the establishing shots, right? Not just the establishing shots of the visuals of entering the studios and walking down Hollywood Boulevard, but the establishing shots of the music, what it is meant to set up in terms of being part of all five senses and enjoying it in 360 degrees. Sorry. Obviously there's a reason why I had to say what I said and it's, um, it's, I didn't realize it's bothering me more than it did. Anyway, um, we are, we are, um, 
on this virtual tour of Disney's Hollywood Studios, exploring the meaning behind the music, too, the choices that were made. And thanks again to Lisa Donato Glasner of the CastleRun.com and CoreMemories.com and William Mag Magalio. I'm not sure if you guys are here tonight. Um, had a lot of fun uh, really sort of going through it, and, and I really appreciated William sort of bringing his musical background to it and sort of touching on things that that me specifically as a not I tried to be a musician many many times I admitted something I think I'm not sure if it's in the first part of the show or the second part of the show that um you know I took a lot of lessons but I never really sort of mastered anything and I will because we're family and we're friends I will admit so I took lessons this is so embarrassing. You're going to see why I never dated. So I took, uh, I played the clarinet for a number of years. I played the trumpet for a number of years. I took some guitar lessons. Uh, was never very good. I took some piano lessons at my house. Um, although my piano teacher would come over, would say, here, play this, and would sort of like fall asleep. He was like some like, old hippie dude, whatever. So I never really mastered any uh, instrument. Man, I could play a mean harmonica. No, I couldn't even do that too. I tried. I am not musically inclined, but uh, I enjoy and I appreciate music. And, and that's why I love Hollywood Studios, specifically the areas that we talked about today. The establishing shot of that entrance plaza, going down Hollywood Boulevard and sort of moving our way like Magic Kingdom and, and Main Street USA, geographically forward as well as moving forward in time from the late 20s, early 30s through the 40s and then the post-war era as you start to move down Sunset further and then that slightly more somber, melancholic, foreboding music as you approach the Tower of Terror and then off in the corner is um, Steven Tyler who's like 176 years old and currently still in rock and roller um Starring Aerosmith for now, but I would love to know from you, one, your thoughts on this week's show. How much do you pay attention to the music when you go to the parks, specifically places like Disney's Hollywood Studios, where some of the tunes, which have changed since 2018, we talked about that as well, there's less in certain areas of some of the more familiar movie and TV themes as opposed to music that was composed and or rearranged specifically for the parks. But as you go through this big band swing jazz era, how much do you, how much not do you only listen to and appreciate, but I think so many of the tunes are familiar, even though if you don't necessarily know a Duke Ellington or a Grand, uh, um, I was going to say Dan Miller. Dan Miller, different, a Glenn Miller, um, you know, or, or an Andrew sisters, because you may have heard those songs, um, like we talked about from Captain America, but talk to me about some of the music that from this section of the parks. And thank you to all of you who are making me feel better talking about some of the instruments that you have played. Uh, Chandler says it's probably sitting with the grease tape. Chandler, I'm going to let you in on a little something. I um I still have my trumpet in my garage and I should take a picture of it. Like, you know, when you're in school, you put like all kinds of stickers on your on your mead trapper keeper. I put all kinds of stickers on the outside of my trumpet case. It probably is a um an indication of who I was and where I was at that time of my life. But I do still have my trumpet in there and I appreciate that people like Stephen also like this Glenn, I, I do, I love, love, I was born in the wrong time, or maybe I was living then, and I'm, I love this, this era of music, um, it was simpler, it spoke to me, um, there's a lot that, that you can hear, and I think take away from it on an emotional level, from some of the the songs. So Jim Rohoski was also a trumpet player through his first year of college. Aaron says, I don't have a musical bone in my body. I tried. Um, I <laughs> Am I the only Cuban <laughs> without any rhythm? Uh, Diana May played the accordion many, many years ago. I'm, I was too little for the accordion. Like I just never, this is what have been me trying to play that, that big heavy box. Uh, Amanda says walking down Sunset Boulevard is one of my favorites. Like I tonight or maybe next week, 
and I have in the past, um, I would sit at like Sunset Ranch Market, yes, with, with some sort of food-related item in front of me, and I would sit uh, just under one of the umbrellas or canopies and just listen to the music and watch people go by. And I, and I love that area of the park, even too from a, a storytelling perspective. And if you are a member of the WW Radio Nation and got the scavenger hunt from that section of the park, there's some areas in, in even sort of the Sunset Ranch Market that I think a lot of people don't go to, like the Victory Garden. And look at some of the details back there and listen to some of the details in the music that I think are missed by a lot of people. Uh, so Beauty and the Beast show does count. Uh, we didn't, I don't think we necessarily specifically referenced that because it is really just music from the um, from the movie. Although I should say that I do miss, when we talk about the live entertainment, I do miss, because I don't think they're there at all anymore. Four for a dollar used to open for Beauty and the Beast, which by the way, opened the exact same day as the movie did, which I think is is fascinating um but i do miss some of the live music there heather richard played wait the flute the sax the baritone sax and the piano that is impressive that is very very impressive uh ellen and matt shaw said i listen to disney parks background music while i work it is the best part of the day um i'm you know I, i don't get in my car a lot but usually if i'm in my car i'm listening to a podcast non-disney related usually business related or um you know retro sort of um like gen x sort of stuff related but when i do listen to music it's either stuff from the 80s or it was like disney background music i think because it connects us to this place. And I think that's why it's really interesting. The feedback that I get from these shows going back to Magic Kingdom has been some of the strongest, most passionate, and just from a volume perspective, the greatest amount because it touches on such a sense of nostalgia and sentiment. And it's evocative of memories, right? We talk about sense evoking memories. I think a lot of this music does as well. Um, Music changed a lot since it was MGM Studios, absolutely. Uh, I think the 2018 change was one of the ones that was most notable. But even if you went back and looked, and I didn't want to go too far back because the show was already two plus hours long. Um, I I blame Will and Lisa. I was pretty much done in 15 minutes, but they just ram, ram, they'd ramble on. Um, the music has changed a lot since the parks have first opened. I, I agree. Um let me see. Marriage with Disney Addict says, imagine how creepy it would be walking through a silent park. Have you ever watched a movie without a background track, a background score? It's also very creepy. It's almost to the point that it is unsettling. Um, I have to catch up. I get Sue Passauer says, I get totally lost in the music as I walk through the parks. And I, I do as well. And you know, there are things that we liked and things that we didn't like about sort of the immediacy post-pandemic of going into the parks and there not being a lot of people there. Yes, the 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 lines were very short, but there was something missing in terms of the crowd. But it was noticeable how loud the music is when it is not sort of tamped down by the cacophony of voices. You hear it's much more pronounced, it's much clearer. And it almost sort of made the picture brighter. And I know I sound like a crazy person when I say that. It wouldn't be the first time. But it did. The The, the volume of the music without the, the cacophony of voices really seemed to make it brighter. And I think if you walk through the parks, and it's sort of what I try and do with the show and with the scavenger hunts, is I want you to appreciate the parks on different layers and at different levels. Because you can walk through the same place three different times, and you're taking it on a surface level, you're taking on a, a musical level. You're taking on a level of sense. You're taking on a level of details or you're taking on a level from a 30,000 foot view. And I think you appreciate the same parts of the park very, very differently. And my hope and my goal and the intent with the music of the parks is to make you appreciate some of the BGM that, that sort of just gets lost, right? It, it is part of that cacophony sometimes and it does get a... A little lost. I, Amanda, you know, I think we touch on Fantasmic in the second part of the the show. Valerie, I too also find myself uh, humming along. If I'm alone, I may actually sing, but, but 
very, very quietly because nobody wants to hear that. Eddie Kern, I think we all agreed when we did that show about the music of Epcot, that specifically Future World, that, that Epcot entrance loop and some of the songs specifically, Papillon, We're Looking at You, are one of those things that are on not just your but a lot of our loops as well. Chuck Lyonberger of MEI Mouse Fan Travel. I love listening to the BGM. The new BGM from Galaxy's Edge is great. John Williams, to say he is a master, to say he is a genius is an understatement. He's 90 plus years old. I, I am sad for the day when the inevitable happens because of the joy that he's brought so many people in so many different ways and places with the music that he has created. Um, Becky said, I sang, does that count? I don't know what context you're sort of talking about that in, but I need to sort of get a little deeper into there. Um, Amber Bramble was a 4-H clogger for 10 years. I clog dressed as a cow. That's my grease tape. There's a part of me that wants to see that, but I will not do it in exchange for uh, the grease tape. Is the show... Next week, name that tune, courtesy of Lou on trumpet. You never want to hear me play the trumpet. But it was some of the music from Sunset Boulevard that made me want to play. I actually think the reason why I really wanted to play was because of Herb Alpert. And I know I'm dating myself, but Rise by Herb Alpert, I was obsessed with that song as a kid. And I wanted nothing more than to be able to replicate that, that the beauty from that horn that Herb Alpert was able to do. I can see myself in my parents' basement with that red shag carpeting and the pinball machine and the jukebox and all things, sitting there practicing the trumpet. Again, I'm sorry for all the bad practicing that you guys had to um, that you guys had to sit through. So, um, I love seeing. By the way, I love the stories about the musical background of um, of so many of you and some of the different and unique instruments that you have all played. Christopher Brown says, I miss the movie soundtracks from the front entrance and the jazzy Disney tunes that they play now are pretty cool. Christopher, I remember early on walking down, especially areas by Commissary Lane, because it was a little bit quieter back there. You could really hear some of the movie songs that I'm like, wait, that's not Disney and that's not Disney. And then later on, I'm like, wait a minute, that's the Harry Potter kid. How, how are they playing that here? Because I think it wasn't about the studio that it came from, I think it was sort of the the importance and the relevance of the music at the time. I'm pretty sure, and I would, I'll have to check this before I do any betting on it, but I'm pretty sure that I heard the, the music from Three's Company back there at some point. Come on, knock on our door, they've been waiting for you. When the kisses are hers and hers and his, Three's Company too. Mr. Roper, how I miss you so. Um... <laughs> who played the triangle in first grade. Lori Oliveri was in drum corps. Look at the Emmy. I think we can get together and gather a mouse fan travel band and get you guys to um, to do. Becky says she sings, so we'll see. Uh, Erica Manning, great point. I love that the sound matches the architecture. It helps the immersive feel. It is a vibe. It, it's very well said because you're right. The picture has to be painted with all colors, meaning it's not just about the architecture. The smell has to be right. The costumes have to be right. The music has to be right. The architecture has to be right. It all needs to fit because if it's wrong, we're going to notice, right? We might not know why it's wrong or why it's off, but we would notice. Sean says the music is so important to me. I'm also a huge fan of the lighting. Both make, make a magical combination. I'm, you know, I wonder if there's a way to do a show about the lighting in Walt Disney World. I actually know someone who, and I've been trying for years to get her to start it back up again, but she's she's a cast member, she's very, very busy, who started a blog about the lights of Walt Disney World. The thousands of different types of lights and the theming of the lights and how they match exactly where you are. World Showcase is a phenomenal example because the lights that you see in the Japan Pavilion are markedly different from the ones that you will see on the pavilions that bookend it. And the, the almost sort of the lighting transition, even in terms of not just the fixtures, but the temperature and the color of the lights m matters and changes as well. 
um, I'm the best singer when I'm in my car alone. I'm quoting Darren. I am not quoting myself. Uh, all of you seem to be very, very musical, musically inclined. Kevin Shea says, I played the sax, baritone, and alto in a swing band in high school and college. I'm not that old, <clears throat> but the Hollywood Studios music is the soundtrack of my life. And that's one of the things, I think a lot of the music of that era, and I know some kids will be like, it's old people music. I think a lot of it is timeless, right? I think not just years, but decades from now, we will look at the Harry James and the Ellingtons and, uh, you know, and they will still be constants in sort of the, the overall zeitgeist. Lisa said, I, and I could have talked so much more. Lisa, I had to edit out about 45 minutes of just nonstop ram. No, we could have. I, I mean, I tried to be cognizant of the time, although I will say that I had a coaching. I don't, I don't want to say who it was unless she's here. I had a coaching meeting this morning with someone at Port Orleans Riverside, which I love so much. We need to go see Help Bob again. And Scat Cat Club is going to be Wednesday Night Live, but I digress. And she's like, yeah, I wish the show was longer because I ran out of time on the plane. I said, can you record that as a voicemail right now? Because nobody's going to believe that. I get this a lot. People ask if the show was longer. So anyway, um, I love the movie trailers with the wrong soundtrack in the background. They're usually hilarious. Music is everything. Uh, I also, you know, we didn't even talk about the music of the movies in places like Sci-Fi Dine-In. You know, we didn't go into a lot of places and even, you know, we talk about Muppets sort of on a very surface level, but um, let's see. Once we got to Disney MGM Studios, before they turned the music on, it was very strange. Dave Rashoni, who is a very, very wildly accomplished musician, also, by the way, the composer and the singer, along with his lovely wife, Kathy, of the WW Radio theme song. Thank you very much, Mr. Rashoni. Um incredibly musically gifted go to djrmusic.com to check out some of dave's um original compositions and his rearrangements of some very familiar disney tunes you can find them on the spotify or you can if you're og you can order one of dave's cds he'll sign it for you i don't know if he will but now I, that i said it hopefully he will um I miss We Go On as we walk through Illuminations. I've had Fantasmic music as my ringtone before. So who has Disney music as a ringtone? Who has Disney music? And I'm sure all of you, to a certain degree, who has Disney music as a ringtone on your phone? We should post that in the clubhouse. Who has Disney music and what is your Disney ringtone? What is your... I almost want Becky to call me just so you can hear her ringtone because I have a special one just for her. Um... Valerie Seidel, I love her Albert music. Yeah. And some people saying, who is, who is, uh, saw Chuck Mangione in concert once. It was fabulous. I, I, are these guys even still, I mean, this is how long ago it is. Um, are they even still alive? Are Chuck Mangione and Herb Albert even still alive? Because I have to imagine they were pretty up there. Uh, Ashley Bittenbender says, how about the background music of the show that used to be on all the Disney resorts in early 2000? Rip. I'm assuming that you are talking about um, the top, what was it? Top 10, which wasn't top 10 with Stacy. It was top something with Stacy. And now I hear all her here. All I do is hear her saying yummy, yummy, yummy. And seeing the little pretzel as she's walking through Germany, pretzel und beer. Um, is that what you're referring to? Beatrice Dennis played the clarinet, but I'm a much better band groupie. I'm moving on. Um, so, um, yeah, I remember hearing Harry Potter. My wife thought I was crazy. Three's Company on ABC. Yeah, three. So I'm I'm pretty sure I heard the Three's Company. Um, yeah, Chrissy Garachi says, uh, I think the section of MGM, they played the music of any ABC show. It's good to know that I was not crazy. At least they weren't playing the spinoff music from the Ropers because the, the Ropers had a very short-lived it was like the Joni Loves Chachi of spinoff shows. Um, officially sort of when they jumped the shark. Uh, love the Morocco Lanterns. Um, I'm good at impersonating Scuttle. If I sing, I'm just quickly scrolling through and catching up. Um, I'm still way back on Illuminations after music. The Illuminations pre-show music 
is actually really, really good too. There, there's a, I don't remember what the title of it is. There's a really, really good, um, it's called, a, it's not the World Showcase Mix, but it, there's a, a short version that is like a medley of music from each of the 11 countries, which is really, really good. I don't, I'm, I haven't heard it in the parks, but it's one of the, the things that I really enjoy when I play it. Um, I had to stop putting, wait, I had to stop putting background music on in the classroom because I'd get all teary when we go on, came on. We could do it. We can do a um, top 10, top 10 Disney. Somebody write this down. This might actually be a good show. Top 10 Disney songs that make you cry. Top 10 Disney songs that make you cry. There's, there's a bunch that come like right to my mind very, very quickly. Uh, okay, so now you're talking about ringtones, the DCL chime on a lot of you, the DCL chime, the Imperial March, Marvel, monorail door announcements, it's a small world, uh, a, a lot of monorails, a lot of my ringtone is Let It Go, Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow, top 10 Disney ringtones. Again, I should be writing these down, but I only have so many hands. Eric just Fisher just I am Groot. Yes. Yes, you are. Must do Disney. That's it. It was must do Disney. If somebody can find it, I interviewed Stacy eons ago. It's probably in it's probably in the one to two hundreds, maybe, that I in um that I interviewed Stacy, who has a fascinating background and like second career beyond the VO work. Right, she does a lot of voiceover work now, but um, I want to tell you what it is and I don't want to tell you what it is because it's so like disconnected from what she does in the voiceover world. And then when you hear her talk about what she did, does, you can't help but picture her doing that thing. And I'm being vague on purpose because I want you to go back and listen. So wait, Becky, did you really try and call? You didn't try and call, did you? Oh, you did. Wait, do it again. I did have it on Do Not Disturb. Wait, I'll I'll do it again. I'm not sure if. Wait, okay, I'll do it that way. Let's see if you can. Let's see if it works this time. Um, the greatest American hero, Michael Camp. Um, I told you never to call me here. I'm live. Bye. Um, Illuminations pre-show is amazing. Uh, Lisa Rose Glass says Inca. It is one of the Illumination pre-show pre-show songs, um, which I can hear it, and I don't want to start to try and replicate the sound. And the reason why. That song for Becky is from um, Tomaters is because I don't know if we ever laughed as hard as the first time we rode. Um, my God, why am I? The Tomater ride in, I'm starving. The Tomater ride in um, California Adventure. So uh, Aaron says Super Soap Weekends. I think you mean Super Soap Weekends. Remember e Super Soap Weekends, ESPN The Weekend? which was super, it was great. It was weird, sort of where it was, um, especially in that back section where Rock and Roller Coaster currently is um, and the show's back there. But yeah, I remember Super Soap Weekends because I remember I always wanted to meet who is the soap opera actress who was on, it was like General Hospital or whatever it was. Susan Lucci, she was there, she was there for like 80 years and like never won an Emmy. But I was like, oh, like if I, I don't know anybody else, but that would be the one person I wanted to meet. Um, oh, now you're getting into the songs. Now I'm catching up on the music that would make When She Loved Me from Toy Story is a tearjerker. I see The Light is a tearjerker. Happily Ever After makes me cry. I'm telling you, I said it on the show. I'm not sure if it's in the first section or the second section. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to take the video. I'm going to post it. I, I got to remember to do this after I'm done tonight. 
I keep talking about the Alan Menken Compass of Your Heart song that he sings in English for the Tokyo D23 Expo. It, every single time, just tears from the side of my eyes. Like, it's, it's, it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, although Becky's text, when Becky texts me, that sound is different. It's a little bit more foreboding when Becky, when, when Becky texts me. Um, all right. So Becky found the link for, which I can't actually post here, but you can find it in the, uh, in the chat. She says it's show 234. Wow. Thank you for 234, 400 shows. So that's, it's like 10, 11 years ago if I'm doing quick math in my head. So Jeremy Chappelle says, uh, I fanboyed Stacy way back. She's also like the nicest person in, in the world. Like she's as nice as they say, never meet your heroes. Go meet Stacy. Cause she is like the nicest person in the world. Um, and she still is like, she's still, you know, pops around in some Disney stuff here and there. Top 10 list of Disney things to bring Lou to tears. Jeremy, that would be a long list, man. I, uh, I'm the first one to admit, and I don't care. I'm fine with it. Uh, you know, I'm an emotional guy. I'm an emotional guy, and I, and I wear my emotions very much on my sleeve, despite what some people may say to the contrary. Um, so, yeah. Kitty McNamara says, the first 20-ish minute, the first 20 -ish minutes, which also known as the best part of Up, the the music and the visuals is that perfect sort of blend of things to make you cry. But I don't think we've done that. If somebody could take a quick look for me, I think I think we did a top ten emotional moments like in the parks, but I don't know if we've done it in terms of music and or movies. Maybe those are two top tens we could do. If somebody can just Check that for me and then email me. I should be writing these down, but I'm like, there's all kinds of dials and switches and like things going on over here. Um, I, I haven't even like started playing around with all the sound effects yet. Uh, we go on. We go on. Not one. Okay, you're correcting. Um, so Emily S says, Stacy or Samantha Brown? I'm not sure the context of that question. They are both wonderful people. Uh, incredibly, incredibly nice. Um, I had interviewed Samantha Brown twice and then I met her at uh, an event. I don't know if I was attending the event or if I was speaking at the event. And I also met her husband. Samantha Brown's husband is like a really nice guy. When when she was pregnant with her twins, her husband was going to a lot of like travel-related conferences that I was at and I was keynoting at one and I met him there. Uh, and it was a super, super, super nice guy. Uh, I used to love, do you remember the Samantha Brown shows? It was, I think it was called Great Hotels. And I remember she had done one on like Wilderness Lodge and a couple of other Disney resorts. It wasn't a Disney a show specifically, but it was a Travel Channel show. I think it was called Great Hotels with Samantha Brown. And she had done a number. And then she had done, after that, she had almost become, you know, she had a relationship with the company. It was doing a lot of, of, Disney related stuff. Uh, Remember me sure brings me to tears. It says Amanda Steves. Her Herbert Herbert Herbert. Um, Toy Story three. Someone bent best ceiling attractions. I don't know what that means. Um, I do need somebody to help update that chart. Um, Tarzan is an, uh, Ashley Bittenbender. You are right. Uh, the Phil Collins music from Tarzan is really, really good too. Also gets me very emotional. I don't know why I, it doesn't matter. You cry on the show all the time. So it's not like you're telling anybody anything new by just saying that you get all like weepy. You'll be in my heart. I'm with you. Like, and if it catches you, like, I think if the mu music catches you at just the right sort of time, it's, it could be all over. It could, it could be all over. So, uh, the song that gets me, says Chrissy, is Now That I See You from Rapunzel. The Osborne Lights music, says Brett Bowen. 
Yeah, great hotel. She did Grand Flor Floridian as well. I know I'm bouncing around in the comments here. Great hotels with Samantha Brown. <laughs> Becky says, oh, she did one on, uh, ask me later. Ask me later. Baby mine from Dumbo. It can't even. Like I just, it's, go the distance from Hercules. Also, I, I agree, Kira. It also, it can be both inspiring and tear jerking as well. And I think that's what great music does is it, it, it is evocative and it's emotional and it pulls from you these things that um, you, you don't even realize that you are feeling. So Jonathan on cue says, so much of the music reminds me of my mom and that's when I tend to tear up. It brings back some memories that we have. Sometimes music, like there are, so, and I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but there's music that I get very emotional about and I don't know why. I don't know what it is about certain songs that, like, it's, if I hear in the car, I'm like, oh, man, thank God I'm driving alone because this is not going to be good. There's some songs that I do know the connection, right? There's, there's like, when... I remember when my dad was really sick um, and it was getting closer to the end and, and I would literally... I mean, I spent all my time at the hospital with him, but I would leave the hospital to go we were still living in Naples I'd have to go down and pick up my kids from school and I'm not going to tell you what it is but a certain movie had just come out because yeah a certain movie had just come out and you know when you have young kids you play the same soundtrack and watch the same movie over and over and over and over again and I love this music and I love this music but it connects me sort of tangentially to that time in my life so I think the music is beautiful and it reminds me of the, mu the movie, but it reminds me of my kids being young and it reminds me of, of that time with my dad. There's still some movies or TV shows that I can't watch because it's things that I watched when I tried to fall asleep when my dad was, was really, really sick. I just can't, I just can't go back to it. So, um, Blood in the Saddle makes me think about my dad uh, was his favorite, Jason. My dad loved Blood in the Saddle, too. Um, yeah. Ashley says, yeah, it gets me every time. Little Wonders from Meet the Robinsons that will be played at my funeral. Oh, Becky, listen. As much as you are in charge of mine, I am in charge of yours. It's a race. It's a race to see who goes first and who gets to plan whose funeral. Um, I should probably write out instructions. This way, it's I, I don't leave too much to your control and your whim. This way, like, hey, this is he wrote this out. He, this is what he wants you to do for his funeral because God only knows what Becky would do. But Frozen and Kanto, right down the middle of Main Street, USA. The music in the queue from Peter Pan's Flight. Um, some of you are sharing, yeah, you know, music that your parents sang to you, music that you remember from being a kid. So, all right, if anybody happened to write down some of the great or awful ideas that we had for some top tens, please forward them to me and let me know. Uh, I also want to know from you, and, and I think we posted this in the group, who or what would you replace Aerosmith with? We talked about this. This was the question of the week. We could actually save it. I would love to sort of have this conversation in the clubhouse. Who or what? I think when I, when I posted this week's show link, this was the question, but I want to prompt you to go back to that post and continue the conversation there. Really think about who would you replace Aerosmith with and why? Is it a single group, a single performer? Is it a medley? Is it something completely different? Maybe sort of the, you know, the music sort of being the storytelling vehicle of that attraction changes, right? Maybe it's it's secondary to the visuals maybe it is is it you know maybe it's a roller coaster through san francisco and the music comes from a film i want to know oh did you hear that that was the that the the thank you becky the ominous tone from law and order is becky's uh text tone so if somebody can link to that post in the chat that's where i would love to have the conversation about who or what we would replace aerosmith with now, whoops, I did allude to something beyond a discussion of the music of Disney's Hollywood Studios. Yes, it is true. 
something has come off the whiteboard and soon into your living room. Assuming you're watching in the living room. If you're watching somewhere else, don't tell me. Um, there have been conversations and meetings and discussions and deliberations and trials and tribulations about many a thing between Becky and I. And one of them has come to the surface that we want to look to you for your input and more importantly, your interests. And this literally came together today. Like, it's part of the reason why I'm not at Disney's Hollywood Studios because I had to put together all the creative so I could do this for tonight so that we can do this the right way because we want to talk to you about an idea for something that we really, really want to do and have alluded to in the past, but we want to see if we could make this happen and possibly make this happen this year. This is but one of the many, many things that are up there and in here. Becky, just wait. I have other ideas. Um, there's one I really think you're going to like, but I'm not going to tell you yet. Shh, quiet, cat. I'm getting to the, to the punchline. So we are looking to gauge interest for a possible... It is a not a WWE radio event in Walt Disney World. It is not a WWE radio event in Disneyland yet. What? It is not a WWE radio cruise. And no, we're not going back to Alani. Well, one of those things is not 100% true. I should clarify. It is not a Disney Cruise Line cruise. Instead, I would like to present to you for your perusal and reflection and interest something that we've been talking about for a while and it is not that. It is it is not a Disney cruise but it is the first time ever a National Geographic expedition. We've talked about the Christmas market river cruises. Becky has been just fawning over this idea for some time. And again, this is not excluding other things. This is in addition to, we are looking in December, 2023 to do the very first WW Radio group river cruise to the Danube River Christmas markets, Budapest, Bratislava, Vienna, Wachau Valley, Salzburg, Passau, and Munich in December. It would look something like this. It is a multi-day, multi-stop cruise that starts in Budapest, Hungary, goes to Bratislava, Slovakia, Vienna, Austria, uh, Wachau Valley, Salzburg, Austria, Passau, Germany, and then Vilshofen and ends in music. And along the way, you go through Central European Christmas markets from Budapest to Vienna. You also, in addition to having, this is what I love about this that is different from anything else we've done before, because instead of a Disney Adventures by Disney guide, there, are, there is a National Geographic expert who gives lectures along the way, and you also get photography tips and techniques from a National Geographic photography expert. This is like some of the really cool part. Let me continue. We also go through some of the lesser known Christmas markets in Vienna and Salzburg. You go to the, the Museum of Natural History, get some behind the scenes look at some of the exhibit there. There's Welcome and farewell receptions, cocktail hours, Becky's favorite part, unlimited wine, beer, soft drinks with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It includes airport transfers, gratuities, tapas, snacks, and refreshments, all your accommodations, activities that are in the itinerary, 
entrance fees, ground transportation, and more. And I'm going to take you through a quick look at some of the spaces and places on board the River Cruise, which, as you can see, is much smaller than a Disney Cruise Line type vessel. I believe there's only about 100 or so staterooms um, on this ship. It's much more intimate. Uh, every day you stop at a different port, so you get to go out, explore with your guide, maybe some time out on your own. You go back, you eat, you sleep, and then the next day you wake up and you are somewhere else. You can see, if you've been on a Disney Cruise Line ship before, just how different this type of experience is. Here's another look at some of the suites that are inside and outside staterooms, obviously. Yes, there is, is a pool on board as well, if that is your thing. And, and what we are looking to do is get a sense of interest if anyone is looking to join us. So there's some questions coming up. Becky, I'm going to read these out. Uh, is there an age limit? I, I don't believe so, but Becky, you can correct me if I am wrong. Pamela says, how can you not add Francis Park to this? It may be something that is in conversation. Uh, thanks to Becky from MEI Mouse Fan Travel. Um, she was also able to work out a group rate for us and our special group rate would start because I saw somebody asked our special group rate would start at 42.45 per person double occupancy it would be this December of this year 2023 um, yes Becky says it's going to be in December in Europe it will be cool but it doesn't matter we can go swimming anyway uh, Becky are there any age limits I did not see that there were. Grace Corbett says these Nat Geo expeditions are an incredible way to travel. Grace Corbett also with MEI Mouse Fan Travel. Um, let's see. Let me just see if there's any other quick questions that I didn't see hid, see in here. Um, so Mel, I don't have a specific date to share with you as yet. I will tell you that it is early enough in December that it does not conflict with um, Hanukkah and Christmas and any other sort of holidays in that section. So you can start to sort of do the math. I can't give you the official date because Becky will lose her mind and my pool, my phone will start making all kinds of noises. But if you know it's not during the holiday season, you can see it is, it would be sort of earlier in the month. Mike DeCutis asks a very important question, Becky. Do they have room service chicken tenders? Um... Becky says there aren't any age limits, but there isn't much to do for kids on the ship. So um, is there a tour for a Sound of Music? Is this a week-long cruise? It is a, let me just double check, it is an eight-day cruise. So you start off in Budapest and you end off in Munich. So obviously, you need to get yourself to and from there. So it would be seven nights plus getting there and getting home on the back end as well. So you're looking probably, you know, nine days or so or so. Um, let's see. What is the official date? Eddie Becky would murder me. Literally. I would not see the light of day tomorrow. She would send a hitman to my house. If I gave you the date, I mean, text me and I'll let you know, but um, <laughs> so uh, the price does not include airfare. And if you go to, if you go to the, um, if you go to the website, if you go to www.com slash Nat Geo 23, you will see um, a, a breakdown of what is included and what is not included in airfare to and from the destinations is not included. So uh, Andrew Prince wants to know how many to a cabin. I do know that there are different categories of cabins there are inside cabins there's outside cabins with different size balconies i think becky could probably answer better how many people can fit in a cabin uh, are we trying to charter the cruise not specifically but if it happens even better could you imagine if it was all of us if it was just all of our family our extended family on this cruise in 
that part of December, I almost said the date, in December, celebrating the holidays, going through the Christmas markets, that would just be, yes, yes. Um, uh, Mel Pick says, I miss the price. So, uh, again, Becky has been working with the folks from Nat Geo and secured a special group rate that starts at forty two forty five per person, double occupancy. So, yeah, it's about $4,200 per person, double occupancy. So, uh, if you don't have a cruising buddy, get one because it's much... Um, and Beth, there's a lot of people, especially on cruises we've done uh, on DCL, that, you know, a solo person finds another solo person or a couple of people, they gather together and they share a room together. Um, it works out best for everybody in terms of, um, and certainly in terms of making the price more palatable. So <laughs> Lisa says, could you imagine being like the one or two families on the ship that aren't with us? We will bring them in. We will bring them in to, you know, the wonderfully <laughs> crazy family that that we are. Much like my my regular family. That's sort of just the way it was. Pamela Bart says European stretchy pants. I wonder. I'm sure. I'm sure they have stretchy pants in uh, in Europe as well. So. So what does it mean by double occupancy? So there is so like most cruises and, and things like that double occupants mean it's per person assuming two people are in a stateroom if it's one person the price goes up right it, it, it there's a single occupancy single occupancy rate which is usually like a little bit less than double um that the double occupancy rate so andrew prince says is it accessible i I am almost sure, don't quote me, um, we would have to look on it and see. Becky might know the answer. I, I I don't want to say one way or the other. I thought that I saw that there was an accessible room, but I don't know. Um, they quickly will be adopted, whether they, they like it or not. But that's what's happened. I mean, that's happened before. Um, that has definitely happened before because, again, I went to, you know, goes back to what I was saying before in terms of, our community, our, our family beings. Look, we were all strangers once. We were, right? So if you come to, whether you've come to a meet of the month, an event, or the clubhouse, you started off as a stranger. You knew nobody. Maybe you knew one person. And what ends up happening is you are quickly embraced. It's part of what why what I said earlier was so hard for me um, because you are embraced, it does call for a classy PJ party night. <laughs> Assy bitten better. I like how you think. Um, let me say, give me the schnitzel, the strudel, and the lebkuchen. Le lebkuchen. What is lebkuchen and where can I get some? Because I'm sure it's going to be something that I like. Um, so Andrew, yes, the excursions are included. If you go to www.radio.com slash Nat Geo 23, it has the full list of everything that is included, but yes. So, um, all the meals are, are included as indicated in the itinerary. There's a sip and sale cocktail hour on most nights with complimentary wine, beer, spirits, and soft drinks. Unlimited fine wine, beer, and soft drinks with London dinner, um, airport transfer, gratuities, tapas, snacks, refreshments, accommodations, activities, entrance fees to site as indicated in the itinerary, as well as ground transportation, and yada, 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 etc. So, awesome thing about this group is that there are no strangers here. Um, Beatrice says, we've made friends at the meet of the month wondering how we have so many people. It's because that's what makes you, you, all of you, and individually you, special is, is the welcoming. We are going to eat so well on this cruise. I can't wait. If only there was somebody, anybody. And look, if you are interested, please go and fill out the interest form on that page. 
uh, www.com slash natgeo23. There is no obligation, no credit card is required. We just need to find out what, and, and please, like we're looking for like realistic interest, right? We have to sort of, because there's a, there's a commitment on our part that has to be made, uh, we just need to know, you know, are we talking about one person serious about going or are there 30 people who are serious about going? Um, I agree. We would have an, <laughs> we would, I think we'd have to have a pretty Christmas sweater party as opposed to the ugly Christmas sweater party. We could do some really, we could do some neat stuff. Um, Becky, I believe the link is www.com slash natgeo23. If I am remembering correctly, it should be natgeo23, not just natgeo. Mel Pick says, I uh, already filled it out. Jeremy says, I'll be in Germany and Budapest in two weeks and I will scope it out for you. I have never been before. I have never been to any of these locations before. So needless to say, I am um, I am incredibly excited to see a part of the world that I have never been to before. And I love the fact that it goes to and through so many different like you're going to see and do a lot on here. Right? It's, it's very, very different than a Disney Cruise Line voyage where the cruise itself and the ship is the star. Here, the um, the destinations, plural, are the stars of the show. I'm just going to give you one more look at some of what this ship looks like. Like, it looks so relaxing, and I love... The size. I love that it's smaller. I love the intimacy of it. That is what the actual river cruise ship looks like. So it is, you know, a much, much smaller vessel. And I just can't wait to see places like this and, and a part of the world that I have never seen before. So Herb Albert is 87. Herb Albert is younger than John Williams. Uh, Sue Passauer, I can neither confirm nor deny any dates that you are saying. If they happen to be those dates, I cannot say. I can. I have uh, you, Bec you, and Becky can fight that one out. So, Catherine says Salzburg, Mozart's house, and the Sound of Music house. Speaking of loving music. Matt Monaco says, my wife said she will lead the Sound of Music sing-along. We will literally have to watch the Sound of Music again together in preparation for this voyage. <laughs> it seems so relaxing until you fight through pics of me fighting for the buffet line. Um, German Soccer League will be going on, so after games people will be really excited or really mad. Casey says, I would literally cry, literally, knowing I was sitting in the country where most of my ancestors came from, which is Germany. Listen, that's going to be me in, um, I'm going, Becky, just call Italy and tell them to get more tissues because I'm going to be crying for oh so many reasons when I get to Italy. I'm going to be crying before I get to Italy. My daughter, unfortunately, cannot come. I'm, I'm a very, very tough time struggling with that. Um, when I get there and then I see the amount of fresh pasta, I will cry once again and I am going to be inconsolable when I get to the Vatican. Like it is sort of the place that I have been, you know, the aliens are calling me to Egypt, but my faith is, is calling me to uh, other places. And, and I too, I, I, this may come as a shock. I am Italian. My father always wanted to go, so I'll, that's going to make me cry. It's it's going to be a tear fest, 23. So, but, so there you go. That was the, uh, that was the big announcement. The big announcement and the big reveal and sort of the big request was to see about our first, our first, because Nat Geo has some really super, super interesting um expeditions and adventures that I would love to be able to do together as a group. Um, if this works out, this may be our first foray into one. So if you can't make this one, don't worry, because hopefully we will do it again. 
Couple of quick reminders. Please help spread the word, not just about this week's show and the music of Disney's Hollywood Studios. Thanks again to Lisa and Will, who uh, looks like did not make it. Um, thank you again for joining me. Please stay tuned for next week. More importantly, when we're done here tonight, pick up your phone, screenshot it, share it, invite a friend to listen. I would really, really, really appreciate it. This weekend, if you are coming to PodFest, I'll be speaking not once, but twice over the weekend about, um, I'll be on a panel uh, with some friends and fellow very, very smart podcasters uh, about some advanced monetization techniques. And then I'll also be part of the podcast Pro Track, where I'll be talking about you. You are the reason why I am there because I'm going to be talking about building community online, but more importantly, taking it offline, doing events like these and taking our friendships, taking our relationships offline, meeting in person and doing th some of these things together. I also want to share with you, you may have seen it in the clubhouse. I posted it just a little while ago. Um, you know that there's sort of two sides of my life and my business, in addition to wanting to help you have the best Disney and Marvel and Star Wars vacation experience and share our love for the things that we enjoy so much, there's also my desire to try and help you do what you have done for me, which is turn what you love into what you do. I do my Momentum Weekend Workshop in Walt Disney World in the fall. I'll have information about that coming up soon. But I also do a retreat in the spring, April 28th through the 30th. Friday through Sunday, we've actually extended a little bit longer into Friday. Uh, there are now only three, I think there may be only two seats left available. If you go to lumangelo.com slash retreat, you can find out more. And check out my eBay auctions this week, www.radio.com slash eBay. They are a lot of Funkos this week, including not one, but two different special limited never opened mint in box Splash Mountain Funkos. Every auction starts at a dollar. I don't know where they are now, but um, it didn't matter if they were limited edition, exclusive chasers. Everything starts at a dollar. So go and check it out, especially if you are a collector uh, because those Splash Mountain ones have been retired. Let's see. We've got music, Podfest, Retreat, Nat Geo, Choosing the Good, Being the Good, Being Nice to Each Other, I think that's it. Is there anything else that I'm forgetting? Probably not. Other than, wait, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Wait a second. <laughs> that is that is where I was trying to get to. I told you, I've got a lot of sort of things I'm juggling all at once. Don't forget to, if you can't make it with us in maybe December, you can join us on our eight-night Bermuda and Bahamian cruise from Port Canaveral overnight in Bermuda. That is, I, I am ridiculously excited about that. Thanks to everyone who is part of the Nation family. This is the reason why and how the show, the lives, all these things go on. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. You can help support the show for as little as a dollar a month. It go, goes up to different levels from there, including a level where you get a care package every single month. I just went shopping for you this weekend. I'm really excited about some of the stuff that I'm going to be bringing to you there. Don't forget that a portion also goes to our dream team to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. If you are not a member of our Clubhouse family, it's fun, it's free, it is incredibly family-friendly and welcoming to everyone. It is a drama-free family. Come and be part of the Clubhouse. Come join the fun there. And whether you're going to World, land on any of our events or anywhere on this big, blue, beautiful planet of ours. Go visit mousefantravel.com. Thanks again to Amanda, Sue, Grace, and Lori, who were, whether they liked it or not, were with me together uh, this past weekend at the House of Mouse Expo. We joined forces again. WWN Radio and Mouse Fan Travel came together. We had such a good time. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies, for uh, keeping me company and keeping me smiling all weekend long. Becky Puppet, wherever you may be, I put you in the closet. Becky, I wouldn't do that to you two weeks in a row. Uh, thank you for being there as well. And more importantly, thank you. Um, I would not be here. All the things that I get to do that I get to share with you, I wake up every day and I go to, night, I go to sleep every night 
grateful for you and very, very aware of where you have allowed me to go, what you've allowed me to do, what you've allowed me to share with you. The tears that I share are who I am and they come from the heart and they are because of you and I love and appreciate you and if there's anything that I can do to help you, please, please let me know and uh, all I can say is thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for uh, for choosing the good and uh, thank you for being part of my family. So until next time, I love you. See ya.